Mr. Speaker, I yield one minute to the gentleman from New York. The gentleman's recognized for one minute. I would ask the American people to listen to the following exchange. Will the gentleman from New Jersey kindly inform the House the source of the memo that he just read from? That silence that you hear is the gentleman from New Jersey read from a fake memo, a fraudulent memo. He's been Zoomed. It wouldn't be the first time, but that is the case. That memo that he just read from has no source. He will not return to the microphone and tell us what it was because he took something that was created by opponents of health care, and there are a lot of them, mostly paid for by the health insurance industry, and came to the rostrum with a fake document. Mr. That he Speaker, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman will suspend for, like what to, uh, for what I have purposes? A, a gentleman a rights? Parliamentary inquiry. I, I, I don't yield for that purpose. I don't yield for that purpose. I'm not asking you to yield. No, you, that's not the House will be in order. Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Speaker. The House will be in order. The gentleman from New York controls the time. And the fact of the matter is, there's an enormous amount of money being socked in by the health insurance industry doing everything. They're creating ads. They're making contributions, but what they're also doing is producing fake memos that say from the Democrats with something crossed out on top. But the fact remains here that there is no reluctance to talk about the real CBO score, $1.2 trillion of savings for the American people. That's the fact. That's nothing we're hiding from. Gentleman yield? I will yield if only for the purpose of telling us the source of the document. Well, the gentleman not yield on the facts, then. I will. Well, the I've House asked will the gentleman be in a direct question. I, I, and I, and I'm, the responding House. With a direct, and I'm responding with a direct ladies answer. Ladies and gentlemen, as much as the, the House gentleman from will be in order. Sure. Ladies the and gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen's time has expired. Okay. Okay. 30 additional seconds? I yield another 30 seconds. Ladies gentlemen, and gentlemen, what you saw seconds. just now is a microcosm for this debate. A real piece of legislation that for a year we've been working on and a fake document they won't even give the source for. We're going past that. We're not going to wait till Thursday to do it either, I say to my colleagues, or Wednesday. We're going to do it when the bill is ready to be passed. Because we've debated this thing for a long time. We're here to solve the problems of the American people, not quote from fake memos. I gotta tell you, you know, these are two of the most cliched, hacky assessments of this thing. One, that this was not a good process. It went through five committees, the most open process I can imagine. Every single Republican amendment was considered. We all discussed it. We've discussed it on these shows. This is not a not a proud day for America. We're, this is how process legislation works. Secondly, this idea that we are not losing jobs because 20% of every dollar we spend goes to health care is just wrong. All of our money isn't going into payroll now, it's going into health care. When a car plant closes in Michigan and moves to Canada because it's $7.25 more an hour to employ someone in, in Michigan, tell those workers that health care is not related to the economy. We are anti-competitive because of this health care problem. And to not realize that ignores even the Republicans at that table at the White House. We had to solve this problem if we were going to fix the economy. Health care is related. Okay. Education is related. Sure. So many things are related. But look, we are in a great recession. You got to focus on that. You don't go on to the secondary and tertiary issues. You go on to the main and essential issues. You've got to hire and people, you don't go and you're not going to one hire. year tangent. Would you stop one year tangent? Healthcare is twenty percent of our economy, and it's a tangent. This is the problem. We've got to solve the problem, but let's do it some other time. For eight years in this country, this problem was festering. Incomes were flat. Why? Because every single spare dollar an employer had had to go into healthcare, not into wages. Our wages are down. Our economy is at a standstill because of health care and we're fixing that problem because your team didn't do it sometime this morning with the regular mail there was a threatening letter with some white powder in it um, my staff was alarmed as they they should have been the NYPD hazmat folks came over they've shut down the office and are going through the decontamination stuff there's no reason to believe it's anything uh, there's anything biologic in it, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to open the office in the next couple of days. And what is the situation with your staff? Anybody, everybody fine? They've all been, look, we had a, they were, uh, had to surrender their clothes and get hazmat suits and go through some tests and some debriefing with the, uh, the NYPD. I don't, you know, they're, they're a little bit shaken up. I'm a little bit concerned about their well-being. Um, and uh, you know we've, we've they're they're on their way home at this hour, and we're going to see when we can reopen the office. Was there anything that accompanied the powder? A letter? That there, was a, there was a kind of a threatening a threatening letter. It's not. I don't think it had a return address on it. Um, and uh, you know, it was, an, uh, it, uh, was something about you know you know sniff this and you'll see or something like that you know was okay. it a direct uh, a threatening letter because of the health care vote or uh yeah we have reason to believe it was based on the health care vote well, how do it's been a rough week for democrats with all these uh, 
between going through your You know, mind? look, there, to some degree, I mean, I've kind of been, uh, I've been leading with my chin in this healthcare debate, and so to some degree, I'm, I'm probably a magnet for more letters from around the country than other people are. Tens of thousands of letters and emails and calls, and I've heard, you know, only a handful uh, have crossed this line. Um, that's bad and it's troubling. I'm more concerned about, you know, these people that work for me are not, you know, they're not political apparatchiks. They're people who are there to help my constituents. And so um, sending something like that to my community office, it, it doesn't, it's not, it goes far beyond political speech. It's, it's something akin to trying to terrorize the people in the office. And, and that's, that's my first concern. The difference is, I took the largest company and one that, that Glenn Beck has a relationship with and you advertise very heavily on. Glenn Beck has a responsibility to the people that watch your show to say, you know what? There are smart ways and dumb ways to buy gold that I'm advocating. This is a bad way. That's not Can true. I tell you he doesn't something? have that responsibility. Can I tell you something? Well, I want to say he used to be a paid sponsor for this company, Fox, to their credit, said you've got to stop that relationship. The difference between because television it's unethical. and radio. No, no, no. The difference between television well, and radio. Well, look, can I tell you something? Fox was right. Glenn Beck is wrong. Oh, you're oversimplifying this, but I want to wrap it well, up. By the way, I'll, I will give you just the on the word. point of the oversimplifying. I'll give, I'll give you the last word. Anyone can go to my website and look at the price. And I want them to. And by the way, I defy Glenn Beck to dispute the premise of the report. You can read the report. I'm sure he will, and when he does, we'll give him his say, because he's going to be on later in the week. But here's what you're wrong about. You singled out one company when you can make a case against almost every They're the company. They're the biggest. And the con they can charge whatever the they biggest. want. Of course it's they the can. I'm not saying they can. Responsibility and it's my, job to, and it's my it, job to warn them. And by the way, I warn Glenn, them about everybody. Glenn has a response. Let me warn them about the worst. Yes, what happens all the time? The you, worst Fox doesn't get an report. A plus. Fox, Fox does, a, does a report all the time about the worst in the field. The worst does worst not get an A I've already plus explained that. I've already explained that. I want to say it's the hollow. worst does have... Uh, it's uh, hollow. Should I do it again for you? 45 no. complaints. That's your they, opinion. No, 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 no. no. 45 out of how many? Hold 10 on million? Hold on a second. Now, by the way, you're doing an excellent job defending this. this you, I'm not defending it. the That's company. exactly what you're this doing. This is a selective prosecution by you. In that case, in that case, the Missouri Attorney General had a selective prosecution. The SEC has selective prosecution. The Better Business Bureau what did they right, have? The Better Business Bureau had a rating that was much lower, and, and? They, and they agreed to give them a higher one. The LA Times said it was for sale. No. Can I tell you something? You're doing exactly what Glenn's doing. No, I'm you're not. You are. I'm trying to be fair. No, Bill, you're being a shill for this company. No, I'm not shill for I couldn't care less about it. i got to tell you something. You didn't ask Glenn about the prices of these products when because he was Because I don't on. care about it. The, <laughs> okay. the company That's where you and I are different. Right. I care about the it. Glenn company, doesn't care about it. You don't care about it. I do care about as it. As long as the company is getting it. No. You should. Here's where you're wrong. As long as the company gets an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating, I'm okay Come with on. it. Whatever they want to charge, what if, I, charge. what if I tell you they're a rip-off, but they're a great business at being a rip-off? That's your opinion? No, no, no. The price says it. we respect your opinion. The price says it, and you can look it up. By the way, I want to say one other thing. Smacks of a witch hunt here. Oh, cut it Smacks out. Smacks of cut a it witch out. hunt. Can I tell you something? This is... Uh, I understand you're defending this company that advertises on your, your company. <laughs> I, I understand. Glenn Beck, Glenn Beck, you're your business partner. Totally I different. get it. I get it. But defending someone that gouges consumers, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Okay. Too. I'm not saying they do or they don't. No, the facts are. I'm saying Go to, go to my website. The facts are the facts. And I want people They're to. They're immutable. And All I we want did, and we took to. them from publicly accessible. If, can I ask something? Would you invest in something that was a 2 i check it out. Okay, but would you invest in something that was 100% market? I would check it out. But let me ask you something. Would you do that? Of course you wouldn't. So, is it a good thing to point that out to consumers or a bad thing? Gentlemen's record. Great courage to wait until all members have already spoken and then stand up and wrap your arms around procedure. We see it in the United States Senate every single day where members say, we want amendments, we want debate, we want amendment, but we're still a no. And then we stand up and say, oh, if only we had a different process, we'd vote yes. You vote yes if you believe yes. You vote in favor of something if you believe it's the right thing. If you believe it's the wrong thing, you vote no. We are following a procedure. Well, I will not yield to the gentleman, and the gentleman, the gentleman will observe regular order. The gentleman will observe regular order. The gentleman thinks correct. that if he gets up and yells on if he's going to intimidate people into believing he's right. He is wrong. The gentleman is wrong. The gentleman is providing cover for his colleagues rather than doing the right thing. It's Republicans wrapping their arms around Republicans rather than doing the right thing on behalf of the heroes. It is a shame, a shame, if you believe this is a bad idea to provide health care, then vote no. But don't give me the cowardly view that, oh, if it was a different procedure, the gentleman will observe regular order and sit down. I will not. The gentleman will sit. The gentleman is correct in sitting. I will not. This is quite obviously General not in order. Suspend. General will suspend.
I will not stand here is and listen to my colleagues say, oh, if only I had a different procedure that allows us to stall, 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 and then vote no. Instead of standing up and defending your colleagues and voting no on this humane bill, you should urge them to vote yes, something the gentleman has not done. Well, look, for nine years, nine years later, we're still in a situation where people that went down to Ground Zero after September 11th to help out, to dig out their neighbors, to help us recover, are dying. I don't know any other way to put it. 900 of them have died since September 11th. And we all remember, those of us who were in New York, the cars lined up on the West Side Highway from license plates from all over the country. These are people who were told by their government it was safe to come down there. And all we're doing now is trying to figure out a way to provide health care so that they can, in many cases, die with a little more grace and dignity. And now, nine years later, we finally get this bill to the floor, and we hear people like Bob Goodlatte of Virginia stand up and say, well, people die all the time. We can't help every, everyone. Or Joe Barton stand up and say, well, firefighters live dangerous lives. We can't be expected to provide care for them. And, but what perhaps was most troubling and what set me off was the idea that when given an opportunity to stand up and fight to try to get this thing passed, even the Republican sponsor, Bill Peter King, chose politics over trying to get it done. He didn't once turn to his colleagues and say, please, guys, put politics aside and vote for this thing. Didn't once do that. Instead, launched a tirade of, against Democrats about the process and about how cowardly we were for bringing this up to a vote. And when all was said and done, 12 Republicans, just 12 Republicans voted for this bill. If there was ever a bill that I thought would be above partisan politics, on the Democratic side, only four of us voted no. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. We have a caucus so, that's pretty so, diverse. Okay, let me ask you this, because i got to go, but I want to get you... Uh, sure. You mentioned the estate tax twice, so I do want to ask you about it. The argument from the other side is uh, that it's a morally corrupt tax. That, you know, if I... If I, I don't have a $5 million estate, I'd like to someday, but if I work all my life and I pay my taxes on my income and then I die and I want to pass on what would be great if it were a $5 million estate to my kids, why should I pay the government again? Why should there be a 35 or 45 or 55 percent tax on that again? You aren't paying anything in that case because you'll be dead. The, well, my, the estate is and that's less for my children. Well, you, but you, the, the only question is, look, no, no, you're not. I answer believe, my question. Believe, Why, well, how is that fair? Megan, 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 you're going to have to let me answer the question. We're going to have a conversation that gets us anywhere. Go ahead. The only question here is not whether or not there should be a tax on that. The question is where the limit should be and how much should be no, held. No, I'll ask the question believe, and you're not answering. Just tell me what, how is it fair. Ready? I am. So the question is, at what level should it be taxed? Some people around here think it should be higher, some people should be at lower. This deal would basically say that for people who inherit money, that money gets taxed at a lower rate than if they worked 70 hours to earn it. That's just not fair. But more importantly than that is how much it costs. I'd like there to be no taxes on anyone at any level. The question is how much this adds to our debt. It adds an enormous amount. No one could be in favor of that and then come on your show and say, oh, I'm so concerned about the debt because it's adding, I think it's 72 or $75 billion to aid 32,000 people. It doesn't I want strike to put you, that but money. what's wrong with those 32,000? I mean, they earned that money. There's if they no, want to pass it on to their no, children. No, they did not. Is no, it they not, did not. They they'll didn't be earn dead. the money? Is it not no, double they'll be taxation? Dead. Those people will be dead. The only people we're talking about are people who inherit money. Yes, some people get very lucky, uh, uh, very lucky at the casino. Should we tax that at a lower rate than if you worked hard and earned it? Well, it's different from double taxation, where one person earns what? it and pays taxes are you on not, it, and then their now you're not answering my question again. Now you're not answering my question. Yes, I am saying that I see a, I see a distinction between your analogy and the question I raised. Sean, this is your show, not mine. But let me ask you a question: Do you believe that we should have taxes at all? Uh, Congressman. Yes. Congressman. Yes, you do. So the it's question. just the only, the only disagreement the is, the question the is, yes. only disagreement is, should the middle class be lower or no, should be wealthy people be lower? The only I question the middle is, class should be the lower. The only question is, you feel justified in taking 55%. I think that number and percentage is too high. In that case, I would cap it out. You feel justified in borrowing. You feel justified in borrowing 40% of that, then, don't you? No, no, no. You feel justified taking 55% of people's money. You want to, you want to borrow group for. Rupert Murdoch's tax break. Excuse don't you? me. I don't listen. I'm telling you, you want to borrow that money. Listen, we pay 55 percent people in your district, and then you take a sledgehammer and tell if them they're selfish. Give a, if you give a tax cut to you. Rupert Murdoch, we've got to borrow the money to pay Rupert Murdoch's tax break. Do you want to do that? Listen. Thank God. You know why for Rupert Murdoch? 
Rupert Murdoch as a job I guess that's creator. a yes. Rupert Murdoch I, I guess is a taxpayer. Yes. So Rupert you want to donate to charity. And more than you do, Congressman, based He's on a very your fine man. He's a very fine man, but that's not the question. The question is you want to give him a tax cut and borrow it from my kids. Yeah, no deal. You know what? Thank God Rupert no Murdoch deal. created a job for me so I could tell you I that know. you're taking way too much and spending too much of the taxpayers' dollars. But if you are conservative and you believe in smaller, less intrusive government, you've got to take a wild, wild philosophical bank shot to get back into supporting this bill. I don't know how you do it. I really don't know how you can give or can say you're conservative believing you should have this much of government involvement in a medical decision and a conversation. And I, I do have to say this. I know we read the Constitution that first day we were here, and I'm glad we did. You have to also basically say, if you support this, you don't believe in a right to privacy for at least one half of the country. And that's the bottom line. Now, some people don't. Some people believe to this day, and you know the right to privacy is my, my, my lawyer friends or people who were lawyers and were training lawyers. The fact is that there does and there is not explicit right to privacy. But I think most Americans of all political stripes believe there's a basic right to privacy. Is there anything more basic? more basic than your body. Is there any more basic privacy there? Well, not according to not according to many people. And that's the conversation here. And if you're on the side of the saying, you know what, I think government should have a limit on where they go. I think there should be a limit beyond which they should not pass. This means you do not support this bill. Bottom line, if you believe there's no limit, you can go anywhere. You can get into any personal relationship the government wants to get involved in, they can. We've got a bill for you, and we're going to have others. But I have to tell you something. I would say to my colleagues and friends that if you're going to wring your hands and gaze at your navel about how we reduce regulation in this country, how we get government out of business, try being the business of healthcare watching this debate. Try dealing with a, an emergency room per, a, a, a situation where a woman is coming in there and the doctor is saying, you know what, I believe this is a medically necessary procedure, I want to do it, but wait a minute, I got to go through this first. I got to go, let me, and, and someone get C-SPAN 9 uh, tapes back for me so I can see if I'm allowed to do it. There's too much government regulation in this. And I think the best thing to do is we should say, let doctors and their patients make these decisions. And as far as I remember listening to healthcare debate, so did my Republican friends way back when, last week. Clarence Thomas' spouse can earn money any way she wants and be free to speak. Or anything. But the question becomes, does that income to the household present a conflict for Clarence Thomas? And so, you know, we've started a website, conflictedclarencethomas.com, where we've put all of these documents up. And it's pretty clear that Justice Thomas should recuse himself from the health care reform debate, at least, because it's clear his household is benefiting from one side of that debate. Benefiting financially because she would not be getting the income that she's getting from these ideological groups if it were not for her perceived income influence on her husband? Exactly. As a matter of fact, she goes as far to advertise that and to talk about the idea. You know, she makes fun of the idea. She says, oh yes, I've got a great deal of influence over these proceedings. And remember something, she's basically, her organizations are raising money by saying, if you give money to me, we're going to try to stop a health care reform from being implemented. Well, she w returns home to Justice Thomas, who has to make that decision, and probably in the next less than a year. So we're pressuring him to recuse himself. To me, it's a pretty clear case of the law that he should. And of course, there's no way to force him to do it except by shame. That's right. Does the gentleman from New York wish to be recognized? I move to strike the last word, Mr. Chairman. Without objection, the gentleman from New York is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, you may recall I was standing here approximately two hours ago waiting to speak with several other members on the efforts of my Republican friends to eliminate Medicare as we know it. And for reasons that are known only to the chair, I was denied the ability to do that. Well, I'm back. And just to review the bidding, here's where it was before that order was made. We had the chairman of the Republican Congressional Campaign Committee, a good man, a guy I like, stand down in the well and say, oh no, and this by the way is someone who was elected by the Republican members to represent him in races all around the country, saying that the Ryan plan wasn't a plan, it was, and I'm quoting here, to const a, a construct to develop a plan. And he said that the proposal was not a voucher program. 
And then he said it was a one-size-fits-all, that Medicare was draining our economy, is what he said. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that might be the rationale for our Republican friends wanting to eliminate Medicare. But none of those things are true. It is not a construct to develop a plan. It is the proposal of the Republican Party of the United States of America to eliminate Medicare as a guaranteed entitlement. If you don't believe me, go get the book that they wrote, go get the budget that they wrote, go get the bill that they wrote. And if you believe that it's not a voucher program, listen to their own members talk about it. The Medicare program today is not, I say to my friends, one size fits all. My good friend from Georgia, Mr. Ginger, was on the floor before talking about how it's one size fits all. How can it possibly be you can be a member of the United States House of Representatives and not understand how Medicare works? Each individual senior gets to go to the doctor of their choosing, gets to go to the clinic of their choosing, gets to decide for themselves where they go. And then the doctor and the patient make decisions. The only question is, are we going to say to citizens who are 65 and older, here's a coupon, go buy private insurance at 25 and 30 percent overhead, rather than the Medicare program, which the actuaries say costs 1.05 percent in overhead. We've also heard them say, you're demagoguing. We don't really want to get rid of it. You do. Now, there is a saying here in Washington that a gaffe is when the Republicans actually say what they think. So there have been plenty of opportunities to see this gaffe in full play. Now, they've been tying themselves in intellectual knots trying to get out from under the basic fact. By the way, I hope your insurance plan, the Ryan plan, covers the, the twisted arms and limbs you get tying yourselves in knots explaining this. It is a radical departure from where we are today. Mr. Gingrich was right. Even the blind squirrel can find a nut once in a while. He was right. It's a radical departure. Own it. Show a little, a little gumption. Show that you're prepared to own your own proposals. But now that you want to do it, and the American people are seeing the difference between Democrats and Republicans, now you're trying to squirrel your way out of it with no disrespect to squirrels. You say we don't have a plan. Not only did we pass a health care plan a year ago that extended 10 years to life expectancy of Medicare, but I'll go one better. I'll give you a plan. How about Medicare not starting at 65? What about 55 or 45 or 35? What is it that health insurance companies do in this country? Now, I know my Republican friends are wholly owned subsidiaries of the Republican Party, but that should, should uh, of the insurance industry, but that should not mean that our seniors lose their Medicare because of it. So my friend, Mr. Sessions, and Mr. Gingrich, for trying desperately to try to figure out how to get out from under your own beliefs. We believe in Medicare. We created it. We believe in Social Security. We created it. We believe in the Health Care Act. We created it. As a matter of fact, every improvement of health care in this country, Democrats proposed, Republicans opposed, and now they have a chance to get rid of it, and they're doing it. But at least if you're going to do it, at least if you're going to try to do it, don't try to silence people who point it out. And I think the lesson here is it might be later. If you had me come back at midnight, I would have said it. If I came back at 2 a.m., I would have said it. Because the American people are going to see what's going on here. You have a proposal to eliminate Medicare, a proposal to privatize a portion of Social Security by investing in the stock market, a proposal to roll back the expansion of prescription drug coverage for seniors. You have a proposal to take away the benefits of those 25 and younger to be able to get health insurance. That is your proposal. Own it. Live with it. Embrace it. Because we're not going to let you get out from under it. And you may delay me, you may gavel me, you may tell me you've got to come back at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's not going to change the fundamentals of this debate. That if you believe fundamentally in Medicare, at this point, you've got two choices. Tear up your Republican Party membership or give up control of Congress. And frankly, some of you are going to have to do both. Gentlemen's time has expired.